I, I feel if I um, try. What I want to talk about today um, is what I'm calling it is um, what tool to use. Um, and I feel it's something of a revision um, and hopefully something of an overview. Um, what we what we have in Pelon is a richness. We have almost an overabundance of tools. Uh, it could be said there are too many. Um, and after all, you know, there's David Pellin, Fritz Pearls, and me. And all of us in our own ways were pretty prolific. Me and Fritz, partly because of our age, ages and long careers, David from his simply wonderful and original mind. Um, but I, I think in practice, we don't get the, um, we don't let the superabundance get in the way. Um, but we are aware, aware of it. Um, David liked to tell the story where he'd be invited to go somewhere and somewhere and he'd present his activated philosophy and people would be very enthusiastic and they'd come away and say, say to friends, you've got to go and hear this guy, David Pell, and he's got great stuff. They said, well, um, really do, you've got to go. And they said, well, what's it about? I can't remember what it was about, but it was great stuff. <laughs> uh, and that, he'd sort of present the whole thing in a three hour presentation. Yeah. Um, and he told that story against himself. Um, but, and it's not, it's not a, we're not just one thing. It's not one idea. Um, it's not about one theme. Um, I, I don't want to get into my critical side, um, but we're not a one trick pony. Uh, and I think I can say, I would say, that while we accept the truth line, we've only got a tiny little bit, um, and in some extent that's our modesty, but we also have an audacity that I believe we have a wider reach um, than other schools of psychotherapy. I really do believe that. At the same time, from my point of view, I have to be, or my propensities, I have to be careful. Um, Moby Dick is my favorite work of literature, and it's absolutely full of digressions, um, <laughs> like serious digressions. Um, and I have to be careful of that temptation of mine to go into digressions. Um, what I want to present here, uh, and it is hopefully in the way of a revision, but it's also an exercise in practicality. Um, and, but, before I go in, into that, um, what, I'm, what I want to present is, you know, and I want to do it over a couple, couple of sessions, sort of what tools to bring in when. I believe that we should be able to make that really sort of simple. Um, but there's one other point in terms of our practice and practicality, um, you know, the tools overlap, they complement each other. Sometimes they 
replicate each other, almost cover the same ground. Um, but there's another place where we come in on this in terms of our belief in sort of what the work's all about and where it goes. Uh, and I, I think in this is a way where we're different and perhaps different in spirit. Uh, there are a whole bunch of tools there, but someone can come, they're not ranked in, in a hierarchy. It's not like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, and as I've said elsewhere here, I don't like the metaphor of onions. Um, but my view is the outer skin of the onion tastes exactly the same as the inner core of the onion. Um, I think it's a false metaphor in this work. Um, as if you dig deeper and deeper and deeper, you will inevitably find something more significant. That may be the case, but it may be what is absolutely presenting um, right in front of your nose is what and what is right on the surface um, and is what is consciously known, maybe that which needs to be addressed. And I feel there's an equality of what's right in front of our face. And I guess the question of where it comes from. Um, but one, one point, a couple of points I want to make here, just to have it pretty clear. Um, the tools, to some extent, are half of what Pellin is. The other half is Pellin chair work and art therapy um, and some of the other parts which we have taken from Gestalt. So in some simple way, it is David and Fritz and how I put those two together. I just want to sort of, I chose, because when, um, when, when I set up what is the Pellin Institute and is referred, you know, most usually as Pellin, I, I had a choice. I could have called it the Fritz Pearls Institute. And I knew that would have been immediately more successful. Um, and I was good at that. I was good at Crystal. Um, but no, I choose, I choose to call it Pellin and it's become Pellin. But, um, you know, credit where credit's due, you know, a lot of the most significant work is is what I got from Fritz Pearls, um, not what I got from David. Um, but the other thing I do want to say, and this I certainly got from David, and it's one of the places where I, I feel he was so original and just human, um, sort of profound thinker, but just sort of human and down to earth. Someone can come in and just take one tool and that's what they learn. That's what they take away. They don't have anything else to do with Pellin. Um, and that is a very valid use of our work and it's a val very valid contribution we are making. And um, yeah, someone takes what they need when they need it. Some of us hang around for a long time and um, go over it all at great length and, and, and with pleasure. But someone might just come in and just learn feelings of accomplishment. And that's all they get out of Pellin. And that's fine. Um, and I think that's a different approach then everyone has to sign up to this big thing and you really won't get the payoff until year three and three quarters or whatever but we're saying no you can come and learn about feelings of accomplishment and if that's useful to you great we've done our job um 
No, I, I, I guess I want to keep developing those general themes, particularly as it's pretty clear that so much of it is going to go um, online. Um, and as some of you know, we I had the virtual Pellon Italy program um, this week, Monday to Friday, and that worked. So I know I can do there what I do in a group of people in a group room in Italy. Um, and that I did not know this time last week. I did not know this time last week whether I could do that, whether, whether it would work. And I know now it will work. And, uh, you know, I'm not the only person and we're not the only organization that is finding that this new world is, is full of possibility for us. It just is. Um, you know, it's not, um, uh, and there are fewer, uh, you know, as, I mean, I spent a lot of time, like a lot of time this week um, establishing safety and all the safety things that we've had for decades. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I know now that this is just another part of complex human evolution that we're going into. Um, and like other parts of human evolution, like the printing press or, you know, when, uh, and well, even before the printing press, writing, when writing came along, everyone was afraid, well, everyone's going to lose their memory um, because they won't have to remember the long stories anymore because they're written down. It didn't quite go that way. Um, you know, liter literature didn't stop with Homer. It developed since. Um, and I think this is a, and yeah, television didn't kill off movies. Um, uh, e-books didn't kill off books, um, you know, printed books at all. Um, so I think, you know, we're, it's not part of today's work. You know, we certainly look at the destructive side of human nature and attraction to hurt and callousy. Um, but our adaptability is extraordinary. Um, I just want to put that in as sort of background that I hope over time I'll get honed down so it's simple statements. Um, but it is a school of thought and practice that does have um, a great deal of practicality and can, can deliver the goods. And what I want to present here is a sort of way, if we're feeling lousy, or if we're in a crisis, or if we feel, you know, we're not moving ahead, in terms of the Pelham tools, what do you do? Um, and what, what I'm saying here, what I want to present here, one, two, three, four, five, five. Um, you know, first, what we do is, you know, what is the bit of health and strength? Um, and, you know, I developed that part of the work early on when I was working in prisons. Um, 
And I can find health and strength anyway with any client in any situation. It's just a particular sort of discipline. In some situations, it's almost a trick. Um, if someone's marriage is breaking up and, you know, it, it, it's an ugly breakup um, and someone being a practitioner with couples um, or with one person who's going through the breakup, you can find something good that they're taking into their future from that relationship. It doesn't matter how it broke down. Um, and so coming in with strength and health first, it's, it's a discipline because um, I, simply because it can sound really bland and ordinary, but it's not. Um, I mean, find just now, just now, two days. Um, let's look at something that's been good about these four years. I mean, we will all go into our fear, uh, anxiety, um, you know, the, the fear of, you know, hopes crushed to the ground um, on Tuesday evening. Um, and, you know, and, and to have the discipline, it's, it's like someone who talks about their ill health all the time rather than trying to find something positive. Mary. Well, one good thing that comes to mind for me is the large number of young uh, multiracial women elected to Congress. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, if, that wouldn't have happened without the, oh my God. <laughs> no, no Hillary or Trump, what can we do? Yeah. Um, and that's true, that's true. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what happens, Cory Bush is gonna be in Congress. And when she goes to Congress, she gets health insurance to the moment she doesn't have her and her kids. Um, Is she the woman that's been homeless that you've, I forget her history yeah. that you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Not recently, but she has. Um, so that strength and health first. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm saying it's a, it's a discipline and it's harder to do than we realize. Some of that because of attraction to hurt, um, let alone the power of fear and panic and anxiety. You know, we get pulled into those and we'd almost get impatient or frustrated if someone said, well, what's the positive in this? That's one, strength and health first. The other one is worse, you, you know, and what I'm saying, if we're feeling lousy, if we're in a crisis, if we feel we're not moving ahead, where's that pendulum been? And it, where is that pendulum now? And where's it been? If I'm low and um, uh, obsessing about um, all the things that are wrong, um, or wallowing in so in self pity, um, you know, where were the highs that led to that low? Um, they they're locatable. Once you use that tool, they're locatable, just the same as once you use the tool of strength and health first, you can flip that, even if it's only for five minutes. Um, you know, one of the places where that came from me, it, it takes a lot of strength to serve a prison sentence. It's not easy. Um, and I say to them, look, you know, that's the strength you have, I don't have. Mary. 
I just wanted to add uh, that's interesting because that's what I do when I'm working with depressed clients. I know the endurance and strength you need to endure the depression or the hallucinations of schizophrenia, whatever it is. So I always did that when I was working in that part of the field of mm. pointing out the strength in the endurance. Yeah. Yeah, it's not easy to carry around mental illness. That's, there's a strength in that. Just the same as it's not easy to endure the years of um, unhappy marriage before it breaks up. Um, you know, if I endured them without hitting the bottle or getting into marijuana or putting on 40 pounds, I didn't do too bad. Okay, the third one is, feel, and these are sort of what tool to use. How can I get into the tools? The third one I'm presenting here at Feelings of Accomplishment, and remember it is the feeling of accomplishment, the feeling of accomplishment is not the same as um, the accomplishment itself. We might do something that in the perspective of a wide world is not much at all, but we might get a, a lot of feelings of accomplishment from it. We might be doing something else that's really significant, but we become conditioned to that over time and there just aren't many feelings of accomplishment there anymore. Uh, just not around. Um, that's a dangerous position. Someone can be, um, you know, the kids are doing well. <clears throat> uh, the marriage is okay. Uh, you know, he got a promotion at work but there aren't many feelings of accomplishment around. Maybe the marriage has become a bit routine. The kids have got their own lives, they're growing up uh, and work's a bit routine. So there aren't many feelings of accomplishment. So at that time, people can be really attracted to having an affair. Does that provide feelings of accomplishment plus plus? Um, so the marriage wasn't any good and that caused the affair. No, what caused the affair, we are saying, is the lack of feelings of accomplishment and not recognizing that while work was a, an accomplishment, there weren't feelings of accomplishment there anymore. So someone, you know, going from being a nurse in a hospital, say, and my hypothetical person is a nurse in a hospital, and then and to become, and some people know this, you know, it's, it's common sense. It's a sweet part of, it's part of common sense. I think I'll get involved with the union, you know. I, I think I'll run for office in the, nursing union and all of a sudden a whole lot of new feelings of accomplishment come in um and i think using your example mary that that that's what's happening across the board in america with um a, a whole group of um black and 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 young women of color um finding huge feelings of accomplishment and purpose in politics, it doesn't mean they're not good mums, that being a mum wasn't enough for them and they had to get feelings of accomplishment somewhere else. They're still a really, really good mum, but they know you can be a really good mum, but there aren't feelings of accomplishment there. And it's a very subtle, um, and in, in my view, one of David Pellin's stunning, um, uh, I like to call them inventions, um, 
could have many else. You don't have to have a university degree to invent something. Um, but feelings of accomplishment when you get inside it are really stunning concept. And at the same time, you know, nothing new under the sun, it's sort of common sense. You know, so some put one person thinks, you know, I'm flat, I need something new. Um, you know, I'll run for office in the uh, in the nursing professional nursing association and trade union, or someone else might decide to build a boat. But they're bringing feelings of accomplishment into the world in which they are accomplished. And the distinction between the feeling of accomplishment and the accomplishment itself solves a lot of problems. So I'm saying, you know, one guy decided to build a boat, um, another woman nurse decides to go into uh, the trade union, the political side of nursing, a lot of feelings of accomplishment there. And the third one goes out and has an affair because there's a lack in their life. You know, and the, all the um, turmoil that a, an affair creates. So that one of the so one of the tools we bring in sort of highlight. Am I getting any feelings of accomplishment there? If I'm getting feelings of accomplishment and I am still stuck, then we've got stuff to look at, okay? Then it's therapy, putting it simply. Uh, but often, particularly the pendulum of feelings of accomplishment together um, will indicate that the problem's not so much, not necessarily a problem of therapy. Okay. So then we go on to what here I'm, it's my fourth one. Um, yeah, you know, I'm in a crisis or I'm feeling lousy or I don't feel my life is moving ahead. Am I getting any true rest? Okay. Am I getting to the swimming pool? Am I, which would bring me true rest? Am I, for me, am I getting enough sleep and getting enough sleep at the right time? Because if we're, if we're not getting true rest, we're in trouble. And if we are in trouble, true rest will help. Um, I guess I would say, <clears throat> and there aren't just one or two of them, but that is another, um, in my view, another um, sort of stunning David Pellin development. And the whole, the whole idea that there's not one way of true rest that's gonna work for everybody. Because one, one of the ways we can see the, couple of ways we, we can see the power of true rest is that um, all the great religions of the world have ways people get true rest. Um, and the other thing is when someone gets into true rest, they, they sort of feel it would work, because it works so well for them, they think it'll work for everybody. So, you know, the whole world would be a better place if everybody meditated or um, everybody chanted or everyone listened to classic music or went to Shakespeare plays and that all gardened the different true rest for different people. Um, and so that these are sort of checklists, okay? Am I getting any true rest? How much true rest am I getting? 
am I getting the sort of true rest that really pays off for me? Um, and if we can locate one that would really pay off for us, are we going to that? And if you remember that in our concept of true rest, the flip side of it is escapism or addiction. So something that, in David's point of view, was that addictions start with true rest. This is quite amazing that something works for us as true rest, and then we just take it too far and it becomes escapism, to use his word. And then the last one I'm putting in here is this sort of first presentation of what tool to use is purpose. Now, do, am I keeping my purpose in view? Do I know what it is? Um, and can I, even though, you know, I'm in a crisis or, um, you know, I'm not doing well, I feel I'm not moving ahead at all. Um, can I take some time to look at where my purpose is and what I get from it? Mary. I kind of been restraining my pendulum because I wanted to let you get to number five because I wanted to give an example of what I did yesterday because I used all these tools. Um, when I felt flat, I didn't really feel low, but I felt uncomfortably flat after virtual pen in Italy. And I hadn't thought of strength and health, but um, an unconscious or subconscious assumption was I can get out of this because I just can do that nowadays. I can get out of, you know, sometimes you should sit with being flat, but it seemed, you know, so related to having um, had the intense week of Pellin. And I didn't push it away, but I, after a couple of hours, uh, I, I wasn't very comfortable. I didn't want to kind of get stuck in it. So I unconsciously assessed, look, you don't have to you can get out of this. You've done it before. As I looked at my pendulum, I knew the high was the was the combination of getting the book published and the being at Virtual Pen in Italy, with that being the main one. So I always go to uh, what can I do to get quick feelings of accomplishment. Um, I think I did. I think it was the wrong time of day to bring in the true rest, but I've got my two little things here for Mexico, which are, have I sat on the balcony in the sun and have I gone down to the beach recently? I better do that, uh, which was the wrong time of day for that. And, and I hadn't realized this one about purpose, but when I looked for things I could do to get feelings of accomplishment, I thought, oh, I know, I'll do that thing I've been putting off about uh, rejoining International Movie Database and looking for contacts who might want to write, review the book. And just to finish up with saying, there's this wonderful accident that they won't recognize I'm separate from my husband. I could only rejoin by being him. <laughs> and um, so, so when I clicked on uh, the, the two people I knew that were still alive, Jeff Bridges and Jessica Lang, between those two people, there were a thousand interconnections between John's work and films they'd been in, giving me like hundreds of leads of people who'd been in, worked on King Kong and things who might still be alive. So, <laughs> so um, it, well, you can see I'm kind of glowing and excited, you know, the, without getting out of the uh, resting after the intense week, uh, I did get out of the just uncomfortable flatness and, and with something that gave me a lot of promise for uh, the purpose I'm working on at the moment, one of my purposes. Yeah, that's my excited contribution. Okay, thank you. Does someone else want to come in and how that works for them? I just, I, just, yeah. I just have a question about the true rest, something that came to mind while you were talking about it and talking about how a true rest can come escapism. 
one of the things I know, I, I just came to mind while you were talking about it, is, is that sometimes for me, true rest can come go quickly into escapism. But something just occurred to me is, is that I tend to be very bad about making sure I get true rest or taking time for true rest. I still, I still sort of see it in my mind as wasting time. Um, even though I've, I'm learning from here, it's not, but I still have that, you know, oh, that's just going to be a waste of time. Um, but I wonder if some of the reason it can go straight to escapism is, is that it's like if, if you haven't eaten and then, you know, when you do eat, you start binging because you haven't been having it all along. And I wonder if sometimes that happens with true rest. I, it just occurred to me that question while you were talking about it. You need to turn your camera on, Peter, if you can. I uh, know. Oh, OK. <laughs> well, Maybe you guys just uh, I've got something. Oh, dear. I don't quite know how to use Zoom on my phone. Yeah. Oh, all the backup things. I switched to gallery. Oh, you got it. Sorry. Wow. Now, talk about feelings of accomplishment. I get more feelings of accomplishment out of solving that technical hitch than probably anything else I'll do this evening, okay? So, am I there? Yeah, you're here. Do you need a reminder of Cynthia's question, or are you okay? Yes, I do. I really do. Sorry, I just got... Cynthia, do you want to summarize? Sure. Um, I was wondering if sometimes if true rest uh, goes into escapism, it's because you actually haven't been getting true rest. And so then when you start to do it, it's just sort of like when you binge, when if you haven't eaten all day and then all of a sudden you have yeah. something, you keep doing it. Yeah, I, I think so. I think I think true rest, you know, has some of the qualities of accepted effort and we sort of got to protect it. Um, because I, I, I think you're absolutely right. We could, you know, uh, uh, overdo it. Uh, and in overdoing it, we run the risk of turning it. Sometimes I can turn it into a chore. Um, um, that wasn't quite my question. Okay, so come back at me again. Okay, I'm, I tend to be just personally, I tend to be very bad about getting true rest. And, and part of me, I'm still fighting, you know, this inner dialogue saying, oh, I'm just wasting time. So then sometimes when I do get true rest, or I can't take it, then I start like going crazy on it. And, and the reason yeah. I've done it is because I haven't been getting true rest early. I don't know. I'm just, that's just a thought that came to my mind. And I'm wondering if there's any of the Yeah, no, no, that. no. I, 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 I was trying a bit awkwardly to get at that. No, I think that's absolutely true. Um, and again, it's, it's like a tool. Um, so there's time when we've got to put it aside. Am I answering your question? We will be, we could easily be drawn into um, how much we're getting from it and not protecting where it might be in a couple of weeks time or a couple of months time. Does that get out of it, Cynthia? Well, um... My mind before was rest. thinking about like, well, maybe I should just make sure I get some free rest. And then if I do, I, you know, and, and just be pleasant. Now I'm thinking, oh, no, maybe I, maybe I'm right to think it's a waste of time and maybe I shouldn't do it. So I, I'm, yeah, yeah. So, so I may Can be I? wrong. That may be the op what I was thinking might have actually been wrong. So well, I'd like to, to say something. Can I? Oh, go yeah, ahead, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Oh, I, I was going to. I'm seeing what might be a miscommunication happening here, and I'm wondering if I can clarify. Sure, do. Um, so the, the point Cynthia is getting at, I think, is that what leads to true rest turning to escapism can be sort of starving oneself of true rest over a long period of time 
And then when one finally gets a little bit, one can't put it down Mm. because one's so hungry for it, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. That a little clearer? Add something to that. Mm. Um, I I think that for me, I have certain forms of true rest that don't end up spill it, spinning over or going too far, often because they're kind of physical, you know, uh, like walking the dog or something. It, it has its own natural end. Even being on the beach for longer than usual has a natural end. And, uh, you know, I uh, don't, as I've shared, I don't watch... Uh, watch the news. I protect myself by not watching the news. But m- one of my true rests is I check my emails and I check the headlines in the New York Times. I'm pretty careful <laughs> to notice when it stops being true rest. Same with Facebook. Um, if I played computer games, it would be the same with that. I'd be I'd be careful. I, I, I just from learning about pen and tools uh, because it's a, uh, reading a book can happen for me. I can read a book. Uh, and end up with a bad feeling. That, I think that's where it, because I've just gone on and on. I used to read Agatha Christie as a teenager. I'd read a book overnight instead of sleeping. But by the time I finished, I felt horrible. <laughs> so um, I, I just think some forms of true rest that are true rest are a little difficult uh, or easier to blur over into indulgence. Uh, maybe the more passive ones, I don't know. That's just my personal experience I thought might be uh, relevant. Whereas physical, when you play a really hard game of tennis or go for a long walk, it it has its own kind of rhythm of it gives you a stopping place because you get tired. Yeah, the one thing I'd want to say about true rest, and you know, I also want to say about purpose over and over again, the individual differences a massive, okay? Um, and so something that works for someone doesn't work for someone else. Someone who has, um, you know, who the physical things can come to a natural end. No, you know, gym rats are gym rats, okay? Uh, and they just cannot get there often enough. Um, so all I want to say is just the individual differences are all over the place. I, I think the important thing is is to work out what works for us, you know, being able to share it with people, get support for it, almost put the wheel on cha- of change on top of it, um, sharing, listening, learning, um, feedback, action. Um, but... I think like purpose, uh, like relationships, um, the search for true rest is very, very, very individual. And, you know, someone will get true rest in a very unusual way, just the same as someone will be in a very unusual relationship and the relationship works. Um, So it's really sort of, is not having, the most important thing is not having formulas. Um, respecting individual difference. And it's pretty simple. True rest is that which gives us a sense of um, being refreshed and revived. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. You know, a good relationship is that which brings us happiness. It's, you know, and people, outsiders can have all sorts of views of our relationships, but it's the inside of it. And it's the inside of a relationship. It's the same as the inside of uh, true rest that's all important. Uh, And I think we get, if we get inside of it, and I think this might work, Cynthia, if we get inside of it, then we've got all these bits and pieces to explore, okay? Um, like, um, you know, the right swimsuit if we're going to go to the gym or uh, or the or the swimming pool, I mean, um, or the right shoes if we're going to walk, 
in the bringing in all the aspects of how we achieve and protect an accepted effort. And I think I wasn't trying to do it, but I think this is an example of how the tools fit together. Um, yep. Cynthia, how's your voice about maybe it is just a waste of time? Because it seems like that. Oh, that's going really you... hard, and I'm having really bad memory links, and I'm, my oh. pendulum is swinging. And 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 I mean, I think my hard thing is is I have you know I have a lot of things. Oh, you know, if I'm reading a book or something like you know, it, it I have a it, that's yeah. So sorry about that, and it just could be memory links that are are interfering. Sorry about that. No, I think that I I, I think that the absolute right question and. Um, and, you know, really important to look at because it will have all the memory links in it. And, you know, I speak a little bit sort of loosely and easily about it because, you know, I had a happy childhood um, in a country that was called Lucky. Australia's called Lucky, Lucky Country. Um, and so I've got, you know, all these sort of positive memory links about true rest. Um, so it's sort of, I can perhaps be a little too light about it because I think for some people, there's going to be a real struggle. And I think the struggly part of it is really, really, really valid because if I this is I've never said this before. And it's a sort of speculation. Um, but I think a cause of some mental illness is because of people's memory links, they can't get through arrest. So I mean, the issue you're raising is sort of a really big one. You know, I couldn't quite get my head around it. Partly because of my stuff, you know. Um, I had ease around a lot of those sort of things, just ease. You know, someone else is going to, well, just take another example. You know, someone's way of getting true rest is books and reading, but they've got all these horrible memory links of you know, being abused by parental figures who took away and threw their books in the trash, just say that, you know. So there will be what you're saying, you know, there at times that's not, not an easy path to true rest. Uh, just the same as for some people in terms of relationship, there's not an easy path to trust. Because they all their memory links were about not trusting. So I think in some of these situations, it's almost then, and it's not part of today, but it's almost next time. Um, and, but that's a fish and cup bait issue. Um, you know, because sometimes someone like me, with the sharing side, on the wheel of change, etc. You know, I'll go on and on and on forever. Um, but for me, it's not the memory side, it's almost the practical side of getting there, getting in the pool, okay? For someone else, it's, they're gonna have to look at the memory links first, there's no doubt about that. Um, and then it's a large issue, it's a large issue. Yeah, I think you could speculate that, you know, someone who's going to lose the election on Tuesday, maybe how do you ever get true rest, okay? And from what we've got from his niece, um, he was taught not to, don't have it. So the world would be a different place if Mr. Trump got through rest. That's a pretty amazing statement. 
But there's some validity in it, okay? There's some validity in that. Um, and going back to Moby Dick, Captain Ahab certainly never got true arrest, that's for sure. <laughs> Does anyone want to comment on how feelings of accomplishment come in for them here? Because you're not too, um, too, yeah. There are times and you'll have to forgive me for keeping my camera off because okay. I'm in too much pain to hold the camera in position. Um, there are times, especially in the past week, where I have to actually deprioritize feelings of accomplishment, which feels lousy because I am too ill. Yeah. Um, I spent the past couple of weeks feeling as bad as though I had the flu without having the flu. And that's just part of having fibromyalgias that happens sometimes. And I don't know what to do when I lack feelings of accomplishment, but I'm too exhausted to do anything. And it's an unsolved mystery. That's oh dear. Oh dear. You're struggling with your technical stuff, Peter. Yeah, sorry about this, guys. Yeah. It's okay. You're back. I can't see you. I can hear you. Yeah, you are back, Peter. We can, we can see you. That, that's so tough, what Elizabeth said. I'm sorry yeah. the technical yeah. thing in, interfered, Elizabeth. That's that's just so hard. Oh, so, sorry, Elizabeth. Say something, Peter, when, when you've said something to Elizabeth. Did you well, want to say something to Elizabeth? Yeah. Oh, oh me? No, I meant Peter first. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Got a yeah, bit confused with the technical you know, I, thing. I, I think that um, I, I think there are times Elizabeth, when the tools uh, can almost be an imposition, and I don't want that to be the case. And at times when, you know, someone just wants some support, some love to be there, um, and I Certainly, because I, I have a sense of how you learn. Um, and, you know, you sort of really absorb stuff and get your head around it, take it away. So it'll be there for you sometime. Do you know what I mean? Not now. Um, but, uh, yeah, and it's good stuff. Um, but, you know, right now, how can we, how can we give you support from all these different places in the world? I might, I hope I can say something that relates, uh, as I heard, listened to Elizabeth, I, I felt uh, a lot of empathy because of what I've been going through the last week or two. Um, and I hope this relates. Uh, 
in addition to going through what was a very difficult move, uh, getting my flu shot and having symptoms of flu, uh, having twice in the last week a severe crisis exploding with someone I'm trying to help, having the police, police involved, blah, 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 blah. And uh, uh, getting overwhelmed to the point where I started using foul language uh, and uh, not at my lovely wife, but uh, you know, in her presence and uh, realizing that I was stressing out my marriage relationship and really got to the point where I'm getting depressed, you know, and I'm sort of going down. And so I kind of relate that to what Elizabeth was saying, and, and, and I hope this helps a bit, Elizabeth, but I think I relate to what you're saying when you say sometimes you have to let go of even the feelings of accomplishment, because I got to the point in the last few days where I just thought I have to let go. I have to let go. I have to let go of trying to get uh, get somewhere with all this, excuse me, S-H-I-T, because I can't. And uh, trying to was driving me down even more. And so, you know, I mean, letting go, uh, and I, again, I might not relate exactly to Elizabeth, what you're going through, but letting go for me at the point was to, uh, you know, throw the list away, list of things to do, uh, at least put it out of sight and put on the TV and watch, watch something and then go to bed early and sleep in and stuff like that. I don't know if that makes sense, but that, that is uh, what, what I had to do. And, uh, I think that Elizabeth has got a good point in saying that, and I can't remember her exact words, but saying that sometimes the feelings of accomplishment are not, uh, even though we, that sort of seems like a supreme thing, you know, like David said, uh, the feelings of accomplishment are the staff of life, right? Seems like a pretty big deal. It is a big deal, but sometimes maybe we have to even set that aside and maybe we can't get even true rest, but we have to, maybe true rest is letting go of a bunch of stuff and uh, letting ourselves have real downtime. I don't know if that helps, I, uh, I hope it does. Gosh, I wish I could do that. <laughs> yeah, hard with intense um, physical pain, right? Yeah, and also with that, having, and I'm sorry, I'm, you can't see this, but I'm crying really hard right now. So it's a little hard to get the words out. But being in a situation where people require more of me than I've got and Yesterday was Halloween. Yesterday was really tough because of a number of things. And, you know, there are parts of the list I can't throw away if I want to, you know, keep things that are too important to lose together and you know if the things on that list don't create feelings of accomplishment well sucks to be me frankly <laughs> sorry no um, that wonder oh i'm sorry tomorrow um oh. i just um thank you um elizabeth just um for being for being in the space that you're in and sharing from that from that place and um I was just thinking earlier about you know the what feels like wasted time uh, and what's really sucked. Um, and, and Mary's saying that it's an accomplishment to be strong enough to go to, to ride out the, you know, the deep, deep depression, for example, or a prison sentence. And I remember you using a word, Peter, that was 
Chekhovian. I think it was like endurance being a, just endurance being being something of an accomplishment in itself. That what's left is that you know we endure for stretches of time. So I'm. I mean, I, I've been um, also just in bed and like an invalid um, and felt completely like it was fucking unfair and humiliating. Um, and I was powerless, period. And that was that. I was in chronic pain with a migraine for seven or eight years I had chronic fatigue and I've lost muscles for joy I've lost muscles for accomplishment I've lost a lot of the muscle for true rest um, because I, there's just a state of hypo arousal and then I don't even know what that means true rest I've had years of that I don't know if this is helping in any way but um you know, it's like coming from the other end. It's not, it's not needing to find time to, for my, for myself. It's the, it's the, you know, the illnesses of, that I've had of isolation and the loneliness that um, illness, mental or in physical can do me to. And, um, that there's that sharing um, and, and uh, community that becomes so huge, hugely important. Um, yeah, so that's it for, I don't know if that makes any, that helps in any way, but, but just thinking about how to use the tools um, but I wonder if it isn't an accomplishment to just be here and alive for another day and a good person who's trying. Isn't that, is that not noble in itself? You know, mm -hmm. in the yeah. Cynthia's yeah, trying she, to say something. Cynthia. Cynthia. Just say no. Okay. Yeah, Cynthia. <laughs> um, actually, going on uh, kind of what, what tomorrow, the end of what uh, Tamara said and this is something that um, and I don't know if where it, if it sits into one of the tools or not but um, and actually it goes even for the things I was talking about too um, one thing I've learned how to do and I'm not always good at it but I've learned how to do is just go forget all the stuff you're supposed to do, forget the huge list and just sort of focus on right now, this very minute, because I, I can get overwhelmed with stuff. Um, and, and what is like, what am I going to, what do I want to do right now? And sometimes it might be something very simple, like, you know, um, uh, turn on the computer or, you know, and, and let, and let that be enough and just, and then focus on the next, right. And just, it just sort of bring in the focus instead of, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it helps me. I, and it, and it, you know, almost any of these, when I get into these dilemmas or I can't do what everybody wants me to do, or I can't do everything or, or, or I can't, or I don't have time to do it. Just sort of like, okay, step back a second. What am I going to do right now? And it might be take a nap, you know, <laughs> and whatever that mm. is, and then feel good that I did the one thing that, I, I said I was going to do and just let myself feel feelings of accomplishment or whatever thing because I did the one thing and and it and it uh, you know and I think and that usually helps and and one thing I was doing and I guess was there is learning to trust my own intuition too about what I need at a moment and um you know, sometimes it may balance to something. Okay, well, do I have, I have to do something for somebody else. Is there some, how much do I actually have to do? You know, what's the very minimum I can do to fulfill this obligation 
and be able to stop. And, um, and sometimes it's even just telling somebody, oh, I can't do this right now. I mean, you know, that may be the minimum of the obligation and, and, and just let that be okay. I guess, I don't know, but that's just something that, that it may be, that I've do sometimes. I don't know if that isn't helpful at all, but um, I thought I'd throw it out there. I'd just like to say something as someone who has had a few years of chronic, uh, not recently, who has experienced cro uh, chronic pain that doesn't let up. I think what you just said is like hugely important, but I do think, Cynthia, but I do think there's a way in which being trapped in chronic pain, like for me, it was my body throbbing from head to toe. It's really, it, it's like a thing that would be really good to think about the pen and tools and apply to them because what you want is you want the pain to stop. <laughs> Can't even imagine being in Tamara's shoes and having a migraine for seven years that doesn't stop or in Elizabeth's shoes where I, I know that she has a lot of pain that's been worse in recent times, not, not better. And, um, it's, I was thinking when we were talking about mental illness, I was thinking about uh, my, one of my uh, colleagues in the D.D. Hirsch clinic have gone to an experiment where uh, they walked around trying to function with headphones that were talking to them as if they were schizophrenic, you know, that was all, all audio hallucinations nonstop with everything they tried to do to function. And it's a bit like that with chronic pain. It's like, Wow, I mean, it's really eye-opening to a person living in a kind of normal, in inverted commas, like a normal level of functioning, to think of that. What do you do if something's telling, you know, telling you things, alien things and dangerous things the whole time, or when you've got pain the whole time? And um, uh, wow, that's a real challenge, I think, for for our tools. I don't know what Peter has to say about that. I did notice Vic wanted to speak, but I just wanted to come in about the, you know, the chronic pain club because it's like hugely difficult to apply tools that make any sense when all you want is the pain to stop. Just a little quick thing that, uh, and again, I hope it relates to things that have been said, Elizabeth, Tamara, and, and Mary Anson did, uh, and Peter, when you said and you talked about, several of you have touched on this about, um, realizing or understanding that just enduring is an accomplishment. That's kind of the way, what, what I saw. And as I was listening to each of you say what you said, um, uh, some words from David Pellin's poems flashed into my mind. Now, the interesting thing here is I'm supposed to be working on Pellin's poems, getting them digitized, and I haven't been able to do that. But I'm very confident of these words, uh, and, and I hope this helps. And, and so a line from one of his poems is, we live, a step forward, understanding the worth. And what I think that means, or what, uh, one take on that is that this is exactly what's being talked about here. And that is to understand the worth of enduring. Uh, what, what, what I heard Tamara say, what I heard Elizabeth saying uh, is that in that mess, in that pain, you have to, in my opinion, and I, I haven't had the same kind of pains, but I have been through a different kinds of a number of physical pain. But I, I think you have to be able to say this is accomplishment. This is accomplishment. Maybe that's part of the, the issue. And, and to be able to congratulate yourself that you're getting, that you're still there. I mean, just being still there is, is a, a big deal, a big accomplishment. Um, so I hope that helps. That was a line from David Pound's poems. We live a step forward, understanding the worth. When yeah, the Ted lost Jerry Garcia, and then I think it was two out of the four died, and they changed the name the name of the band to Half Dead. Say that from the beginning. I missed some of it. Um, you're familiar with the dead, the band, yeah, sort of. Jerry Garcia. Um, he died. He and he was the. Uh, he was it. Um, mm. And then there was a second, I think, uh, band 
uh, but I, I'm not really, really close to, you, you're either following the dead or you're not, and I didn't. But I just, I just wanted to say that they came back, uh, the two um, musicians who were left, um, and, uh, and the band is uh, called the Half Dead. They called themselves Half Dead. Oh, okay, got that. They were yeah. the Grateful Dead, right? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Grateful Dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I just ha think... Half Dead. Yeah, so yeah. I, I feel like, sometimes I feel like, okay, um, you know, we're gonna come back and with, ev with everything, bringing it all in and change it from Grateful Dead, you're right, to Half Dead and keep playing. Mm. The, um, the line, what we have to endure, what we have to do is endure is from William Faulkner's Nobel Prize speech. Um, it is, he is saying, um, uh, if I've got it right, he is saying, you know, our task as human beings is to endure, endure all that's around us. And in a way, all we have to do is endure. It's a particular, particular way he's saying it. Um, yeah, and I guess it's very close to what, you know, Vic's, Vic quoting um, David Paul. It's not very American to not look for peak experiences. Yes. Yes, it's coming out at a different place from peak experiences. And, and of course, peak experiences fit in with us. Um, uh, you know, it's the huge fulfillment of the um, of the performance life force, you know, absolutely taking everything we've I'm got. I'm sorry. What are peak experiences? I, I didn't no. understand the no. term. I, I, I just mean that there's this whole pursuit of happiness so that is your yeah. and follow your bliss and um, yeah. and 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 I think in a way it's 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 like there's something you're unhappy just because uh, in my experience I feel like I'm failing if I'm if I'm not in a certain heightened state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, that was an expectation that I was, I think, enculturated. Is, is that a word? Yeah. But it's, the, yeah. yeah, it's the culture of this place, which is, you know, you're uh, and, and fucking making it. <laughs> yeah, just answering you um, directly, Elizabeth, I feel where peak experiences fit in Pelham is performance life force and performance life force highs. And, you know, we're not inherently opposed to them, but we place on top of that, evaluating in terms of hurt and purpose. I mean, that's the use of the tools. And that's some of what we'll be looking at in the sessions ahead. But, um, so we're not putting them down we're certainly saying they're not everything, and um, and yeah, we're you know they are highs of the pendulum, and their performance life force highs of the pendulum, and within that, people can get hurt. I mean, what I heard in what Tamara said was, I think you said as Americans or something. I I would agree with you. Yeah. As as a, an English person, that the valuing of peak experiences for me was a lifesaver because mm. the non-valuing of enthusiasm and emotional intensity in the, the Britain I grew up in or the London I grew up in was devastatingly hurtful. And the normalcy of enthusiasm and intense feelings in California probably in particular was incredibly healing. Um, but <laughs> that's not always the case. If uh, well, yeah, the society kind of values yeah. peak experiences, it can get uh, wonky, right? 
Um, actually, between uh, what Mary and Tamara and Peter just said has clarified something that is giving me some peace, which is that I can see, sorry, this is, uh, I hate being all soppy like this. <laughs> Don't worry. Is a healer. that <laughs> which is that um, of what I'm facing right now that hurts so much with everything that's going on is frustrated performance life force. Mm. Which is, you know, a slightly bratty voice in the back of my head listening to uh, the thought of enduring and saying, that's not good enough. Mm. And seeing that as frustrated performance life force makes it easier to set aside for a while rather than all-encompassing feeling of being stifled and not good enough and this is going to go on forever. If that makes sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A, a, light, a light use of the pendulum can be useful. Almost like but we need to stop in a moment. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, how might how might how might my pendulum be swinging? This this is so light use of it. You know, almost you know, picking up the tool off the shelf and then putting it back, <laughs> not sort of worrying about it, not trying to particularly produce anything with it. Um, but I've I've a time it can build in some uh, sort of solutions you know oh yeah I know what to do in this situation type of thing um, I think using the pendulum when your body is really hurting is hard because yeah that's why I'm saying yeah, the, yeah. Very, 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 very light use of it, and almost not necessarily um, expecting um, results. That's the worst thing is that uh, I find it harder to do what I know I can do after. It's not just the intensity of the pain, it's the duration of it. After a while, it just breaks it down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just as a point of reference, the I, I do think enduring pain is an accomplishment, but then that raises the fact there's no feelings of accomplishment in it. Uh, I, I mean, sorry, intellectually you can say that. I just wanted to point out that the right at the beginning, Peter used the word strength, that the endurance of a prison strength was a in health and strength. I don't think that's necessarily contradictory, but I'm just clarifying that that the original context in which Peter talked about enduring pain or enduring a prison sentence. So it's a strength yeah. that you can't um, say isn't there. <laughs> it just is there. Okay. Well, we need to finish there. We'll finish. Um, if I'll hammers off, I don't know if you know, Peter. Just yeah, you know. no, I do. I yeah, don't you know. Do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You've done well. You've done well. Have a Thank feeling of accomplishment from turning it on so many times. Yeah. <laughs>
So could you do the ending part, Mary? That sure. would help. Yeah. Do you want to go so first, Peter? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm Peter. I'm in King Glen in Norfolk in England. Um, yeah, I like to have struggly stuff today. I think that's sort of real fit, really feel for you, Elizabeth. Uh, and I'm sorry I didn't have the tech stuff working. That's me. I'm Mary. I'm in Rosarito Beach, Mexico, and um, I'm great. I feel like Peter just said, I'm grateful to people for bringing real things that are hard and, and challenging to see how pen and tools can help with those things over time. Um, Cynthia? I'm Cynthia, I'm in Kankakee, and I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Um, Nikki, do you want to say anything? I'm, whoops, I'm Nikki, I'm in Wimbledon. Um, I haven't been saying anything because I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm sort of blown away by just the, you know, I can't imagine what it's like to live with just pain and, well, I'll just say pain for now, so just ongoingly, ongoingly. And um, so I'm, I'm glad that, that, you know, that, that idea of, uh, I jotted that down just now. Um, frustrated performance life force. What a good idea to uh, apply the tool in that way and just in that way and see. Oh, yeah, it's just that. It, the end result is the same, just as bad as if it was, as if I really was as crap as I'm thinking I am. You know, but it's like, no, it isn't. It, it, that, that, that's, I get it that... Um, the tools are clever like that. If you can find little, just find some little tricky way of wangling, <laughs> wangling your way past your personal circumstances to, to to apply a tool that otherwise wouldn't look as if it applies at all. And this has been in a small, much smaller way. This has been helpful to me today for me comparing myself like this slightly weird for me year that I've had this year of, that it's been really intense of sort of pushing myself against my resistance and my my struggle. In my I can never remember that tool's name. Anyway, rejected effort. Yeah, thank you. To struggle <laughs> against. Thank you. Restru struggle against my rejected effort when I when you know I avoided doing that for years because it just turns them into bigger reject efforts but there's been things I've actually had to make happen in the world and it caused me anyway it didn't cause pain it didn't cause it it just caused ever-increasing frenzy through the year and so I was sort of sorry to go on saying it all now instead of in the middle um so what people were saying today somehow made me well feel really fortunate anyway but just sort of evaluate this little weird stage I'm in just now where I've got I've got a pendulum swing like I feel low quite a lot like it I what I saw new was it doesn't take very much at the minute the tiniest little thing sends me low but equally it doesn't take much like the tiniest little thing makes me go, oh, oh, it's, oh, it's not so bad. There's a little hopeful thing. Like a bit earlier, I read that um, England's lockdown that starts on Thursday for a month, it includes golf courses. And then I thought, oh, that private golf course that I discovered in March is locked down, but then it becomes open to the public when that's shut for golf. And it's really scenic. And I've lived here all these years, and I've never ever been able to walk on it before. So um, that that just that just went oh oh that, whew, thank goodness there is hope there is something nice in the world you know I've got something to cling to. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Nikki. Elizabeth. Um, I'm Elizabeth from Eugene, Oregon, and. Uh, I always feel like apologizing when I take up that much space, especially when I'm crying that hard. But uh, instead, I'm going to say thank you to everybody. Yeah. 
Well, because you really did help. Mm. Right. And you're very welcome to take up space. Yes. Anyone is. That's what the group is for. You know, it's part of what the group is for to support people who come on the call. Victor? Yeah. Uh... Well, and Vic and, and Abbott's BC, thank you to all for sharing, especially thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing uh, your suffering and um, jogging me to remember David Pellin's words, uh, understanding the worth. And um, I hope that you understand the worth of your sharing with us because uh, it helps me bear my burden. It really does. So thank you to all and uh, have a have a, a good, a better, enduring week. Thank you to all. And Tamara. And Tamara in San Francisco. And thank you all feeling um, this was a, um, I don't know, so, something about something about this, this uh, poem form feels like it, things come together going deep and things coming together. So it's um, great. I'm looking forward to, to talking more about the tools um, next time. And um, Peter, you may not know this, but we didn't talk and in the newsletter, which can be changed, I put uh, Wednesday as a Nikki and Mary forum. Yeah, that's uh, what I thought too. Oh, okay. I agree, yep. <laughs> We're on track okay. to that then. Okay, Thank so you. we'll do more on which tool okay. on Sunday. But maybe Sunday. you'll be all tech sorted out, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, okay, you. Bye, bye. 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 Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. All right.